Michael here. This is my book summary of the book Level 7. Here we go. <clears throat> so I've just finished reading Level 7. So at the end, what happens is, in, in summary, the story is uh, push button operating in 127 goes into the Level 7 cave. Uh, human race exists. There's this huge war. Uh, the world is ended by uh, atomic warhead. And then he goes, uh, and then uh, after the war, uh, radiation creeps uh, slowly into all the levels, including level seven. And at the end of the book, um, the push button operator is dead. Now, um, it's a just generally anecdotal book uh, used to deter, uh, reinforce mutual assured destruction and to deter atomic warhead to show an extrapolation of what would happen if uh, there was a modern war. Uh, I think it was a pretty good attempt. Um, interesting, maybe there's a sequel to it. Maybe uh, it would be interesting to see a sequel. Maybe one alien race discovers uh, the push button operator and uh, tries to make sense of it. Uh, that would be interesting. Uh, okay, so that's about it. Uh, I would say it's a solid, solid six and a half book. And uh, that's what I want to say. Okay, thanks. Bye. All right, so the first thing that's interesting is the concept of level seven. So the narrator is one of the push button operators in this uh, super secret complex that's uh, 4,000 feet below the Earth's crust. And basically they have toggles on all the atomic warheads to target enemies. And he's describing um, the level of, of supervision that's in there. W what I find interesting about that is that um, a people that, are, that have no access to the rest of the world uh, can, can, can control the life or death of uh, many people on the planet. So, it's an original uh, idea in my mind. One other thing that's interesting about this book is on this level seven underground compound, all the people, they don't have names, they just have a letter and a number. And the letter represents their function and the number, it's just their name, I guess. So interesting way, this is a new original way of naming characters. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, another thing I like about this book, Level 7, is how the narration format is set up where it's uh, agenda entries into this book. I think it's a really good thing and powerful way to tell a story because the reader has a really strong sense of the timing of the events in the story. Okay, another interesting fact about this book is how uh, early this book was written and he's describing the technology that uh, describes the defensive system of level seven and how uh, the machines are guiding the uh, rockets, uh, which is an interesting take and quite imaginative given that AI hadn't reached uh, where it is now. So uh, as a futurist, this guy is quite uh, talented. I just wanted to point that out. All right, so I'm at the part where uh, after basically the war that happens, this like 12 hour war where they just keep, uh, the, the, the two sides go full retard and just launch nukes on one another till they don't have any more nukes, essentially ending the human race. Um, my biggest takeaway of that is that, first of all, it's original, like not a lot of uh, books go to that extent. Uh, so that's one thing. Another thing is the insensitivity of powers. Uh, when it comes to human life uh, to achieve their their aims and um, of course we are a human run society but we're slowly and slowly more and more being run by uh, robots and softwares that really or or entities that are um, uh, superhuman I guess run by many humans or many computers and the idea is that uh, they're not sensitive to human life and then I could see a scenario where things could escalate very quickly because uh, uh, the people running our society are, are just don't care and they're insulated. So uh, if they're down at level seven, they're unaffected. Anyways, I'm going to, th that's as far as I go, but uh, I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so I'm at the section where it's after the war and he's uh, describing his position and uh, he's hearing all the outrage uh, from all the other levels and he's finding it super entertaining. I find it actually quite disturbing how someone could be in so insensitive to the hundreds of people that are uh, dying in the book. So, um, you know, there's this just great insensitivity and distance that these people have from uh, the people on the surface. I wanted to point that out. Uh, interesting perspective.
All right, quickly, towards the end of the book, after the war has happened and all of humanity is basically dead, except maybe a percentage point, he's talking about how the leaders, the politicians, are yelling at each other through the radio waves, uh, accusing each other of being monsters and hangmen of humanity and all that. And it's quite funny, uh, from the time that this book was written, I guess in the 1970s or the 80s, how uh, he sort of, in a way, predicted uh, what is today known as Twitter where everyone's yelling at each other through the internet. It's just not through radio, radio waves. But uh, there was an idea that people were yelling at each other from across the planet, which I find is interestingly accurate. So I want to bring that up. Another aspect that's interesting about Level 7 is that uh, as innocent as the push-button operator sounds, the narr narrator of the story, um, the, the, what's interesting about and original about this story is how the book is narrated by actually uh, one of the greatest villains. I mean, uh, the guy who is responsible for uh, annihilating at least half of uh, human civilization or uh, half of uh, enemy human civilization. He's pretty much a bad guy, and he's just thinking that what he did is according to his job. So he's actually kind of ignorant to that uh, whole aspect. Which I feel is uh, interesting, but uh, original, but uh, but it really shows how uh, people are in denial of of um, of their situation. So I wanted to bring that up: in denial of the, the the problems and the evil they uh, they create in the world. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, which I think is a big theme of this book, is how our actions are actually affect. Uh, the rest of the world on a massive scale. Although this book is more about atomic bombs, uh, I believe that in our time there are still a lot of things that we do without necessarily knowing that actually affects the world in a bad way. But because uh, n n there's no ownership or um, or things of that nature, uh, no one recognizes uh, or like we're so separated from the processes that we don't recognize that what we do is bad. Like, for example, I would say maybe uh, it's a little bit of far reaching, but like eating, eating meat, you know, like we don't actually understand what goes into making meat. And uh, after watching a few PETA videos, you see what goes into, you know, the, the, the kind of lives that these these poor farm, farm animals have to live. But we kind of are oblivious to it. Um, and even now in the time of uh, Facebook and Twitter, uh, where, where, where we can communicate across the world in an instant, uh, there's, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of things that we do that that uh, actually make the world uh, worse in, in a general way. But, but I have to think about that more. But, but it's just an interesting theme. And, uh, and I think we have to be uh, cognizant of that. So uh, another main theme that I want to discuss is the push, uh, I mean this book, but I feel it relates to our modern world, is how uh, the machine of the modern world is increasingly pushing us into unconsciousness, meaning um, uh, it's making things much easier and we don't have to think too much. Just like uh, uh, the uh, the protagonist, the X whatever number in the book, where he doesn't have to think too much, he just has to do uh, take his orders, and he doesn't have to think too much. And and I feel we live in this world of uh, th that's being increasingly constructed synthetically, and we don't have to think too much, and and either that and think about the implications of our actions. And, and uh, you know, like for instance, this whole uh, COVID thing, you know, the wearing of the mask, which I, I feel is a little bit superfluous, but we're blindly uh, following these orders because that is what the uh, so on uh, the so-called loudspeaker is telling us. And I think that's an important theme in this book. And he's arguing, well, I was just doing my job. Um, that's why I pressed the button and I, I, I don't feel bad because I was just following order. Well, what happens if we all just follow orders and we don't question the orders and we don't think independently? And, uh, and, and perhaps that's what this, the, bo the book is uh, actually just showing the end result of, uh, of living unconsciously because uh, we, 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 we forget the impact of our actions on other people. Yes, I'd like to bring up another point about level seven, and it's about who is responsible for this uh, massive mistake, massive situation where half of the human race or 
99% of the human race is annihilated. And uh, uh, Acts 117, the guy who commits suicide, one of the push button operators, says that he was responsible. But I would like to argue that actually it wasn't just him, uh, it was actually everyone involved in uh, constructing uh, the atomic missiles, the guidance systems, uh, the silo, the whole system. Uh, every single person responsible for uh, constructing this uh, has some part to play. But the issue is that uh, the knowledge, the, the, the human knowledge base is so large to do all these things. There is no one master plan holder. It's, it, it's, it's, a, it's like a big tapestry of intelligence that constructed this uh, to its uh, final conclusion. And actually, um, uh, it's too big for one person's mind to handle in one go. So what I would like to say is that, yes, it is uh, the narrator's fault, but it's a whole bunch of other people's fault. Uh, but the problem is that the knowledge of what was going on is so disjointed that it's hard, uh, it's hard for anyone to see the big picture. And, um, and I think that's actually what's happening in our world. We, we don't fully understand uh, all the different interacting parts that are occurring. And uh, it's important for uh, at least certain people to have a, a, a grasp, the, uh, grasp of the macro situation and where things could lead and uh, perhaps inform people of, of what is going on. Because uh, I, do, I do truly believe that, that AIs are exerting their wills. So non-human uh, non synthetic intelligences, um, even uh, use, utilizing human intelligence, are uh, developing are developing their plans and executing their plans in our lifetime, and they're affecting people in a real way. For example, um, uh, Canadian real estate. You know, I, I think there's a group of people who, who are just innocently buying uh, uh, residential real estate for their own gain, are actually affecting the people in a very negative way. And and it's one of those things where it's like a decision is made and it affects a lot of people in a negative way. Um, so, uh, but, but I'm getting off topic. The whole thing is that people, like, like the world is really complex and we have to uh, find a way to draw out how uh, macro entities interact with uh, one another. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, bye. Okay, so now I wanna talk about this book and uh, I have a thesis for uh, space companies. And I really believe that uh, a, a big direction for the economy of the world is gonna be in space in the future because um, even though this kind of event has never happened, it's definitely not out of the ordinary. It's not impossible that uh, there's this mass scale atomic war. Uh, of course, I hope that never happens. But it, it would be a very good thesis to understand why we should start um, literally exploring and uh, establishing colonies in other uh, terrestrial objects outside of the planet. Because in case uh, something like that happens, at least we have uh, a part of the population that is established somewhere else. So just... Um, just wanted to bring that up. I think that's uh, it's not discussed in the book, but uh, we literally have uh, all of our eggs in one basket, uh, so to speak, uh, when it comes to human life and intelligence and and everything that go goes with that. So wanted to bring that up. Okay, so another big theme from level seven, the book, is uh, the way the story is told. Uh, the there's a war that happens, and the human race is essentially ended in three hours of battle or 12 hours of battle uh, via nuclear warheads. And in the book, he's reflecting on how everything is pointless because before there was a thriving human race, and then all of a sudden there wasn't. Well, here's a good thing. It's like a bad dream. It didn't really happen. But we live in that world, and we have... Uh, a vibrant and although somewhat dysfunctional human race, we have a human race. We have 90% of what we need. And uh, the point I'd like to impress is it's a strong message for us to appreciate what we have and value it. So if we appreciate the kind of life that we have and we value it, 
we will uh, do things to protect this kind of way of being because it is uh, good for us to live that way. So uh, in the book, everything was gone, but in our life, we st it's like a bad, the book is kind of like a bad dream. In our life, we have everything, but uh, the message is do what you can to preserve the, um, uh, the human race and the good things about the human race as, and society as we see it. Okay, that's my thought.